All right, so we're talking about cables and cables in general, not particular XLR, but like speaker cable. There's a speak on power cable. There's an XLR cable. What else we got here? Got another speaker cable and we've got a 10 gauge power cable. All right, so it seems that uh, some viewers on the channel have uh, criticized us for how we treat our cables. And I think um, there seems to be in perhaps maybe an oversensitivity to uh, cables in general. Uh, these are actually, uh, these are fairly robust cables. Um, a lot of people uh, they have posted comments on some of the videos about us uh, throw, throwing cables around and uh, a couple of times the word abuse has shown up on some of the uh, videos uh, when they see us setting up for shows and they see us sort of tossing this stuff around and they're seeing that we're abusing them. Well, actually, we're not abusing the cables. We're using them. And during the use of cables, once again, power, doesn't matter, speaker, XLR, during their use, things like this are gonna happen. Cables are gonna drop on the floor. They're going to be tossed around. Things happen when cables are used, especially in temporary setups, like nearly all of the events that we do. Now, if we had perhaps a studio or if we were setting something up in a theater that was going to be a permanent installation, I think we'd probably be possibly be using different uh, different types of cables. But for temporary use in running shows, we try to use stuff that is fairly durable. For some of the people, you, you've got to ask yourself, do you work for the cables? In other words, do we do all that we can to to baby these, um, do all that we can to make sure they don't get hurt. In other words, are we working for the cables or are the cables working for us? Okay, so do you work for the cables or do the cables work for you? Well, with us, with Stage Left Audio, I guarantee you the cables work for us. We use these cables, but we do not abuse them. Now, of all the components that go into a sound system, and once again, we'll, I'm going to set that down. Uh, we have power. We have speaker. We have other types of speaker cables. Once again, the jumpers. And uh, we do have plenty of these XLR cables. Now, of all the components in a sound system, cables only make up part of it. And obviously, without cables, you don't have sound. That includes the speaker, the power, XLR, but also without amplification, you don't have sound. Uh, without microphones, you don't have sound. Without, um, here's a console in here. Without a console, we don't have sound. Of all the components here I, I just listed, and obviously there's a lot more involved in a sound system, cables, all the cabling, especially, especially XLR cables and the speaker cables, uh, I hate to say it, but those are commodities. These are just something that is used to get a job done. But the reality is, is that the cables are just a commodity. And with these, for instance, these XLR cables, uh, we probably have over 100 of these. Most of these are 30 feet long, but really at any given time, we may use 20 to 25 uh, for a small show and probably up to 40 for a larger show. That gives us 60 more of these cables just sitting around waiting to be used. Uh, said we don't abuse them. We certainly don't do that, uh, but we do use the cables. All right, so let's take a look at this. That was a speaker cable. There's a cheap XLR cable, there's a decent quality XLR cable. On top of that, there's our power, 10 gauge power. There's a 12 gauge speaker and we have a, a 
12 gauge speak on. Now, obviously, I've thrown these on the ground. That's probably about a five foot drop. I think they're going to be fine. Okay, so was this abuse? No, of course not. We throw around cabling all the time when we set up for shows. That's just part of setting up a show. So, let me ask you this then. We're going to grab one of our XLR cables. Let's see. All right. We've got this here on the ground uh, where a lot of cables spend their time. All right. I'm standing on this cable. Okay, now I'm just sort of walking on it. I guarantee you the cable is just fine. People see us walking on cables and think that this is abuse. No, it's not abuse. It's certainly not abuse. At any given time during events, uh, the Stage Left Audio staff, the band members, there's even like facilities people where we are at, they are walking on cables. Now, we get the cables cleared out of the way as much as we can, but guaranteed, when we're setting up in a temporary location, it's... It's just the way it is that there's going to be cables that are probably going to be on the ground and people are going to be walking on them. Bands are going to be bringing in equipment on casters and that equipment does weigh quite a bit and they just roll it right over the cables. That, that's just the way it is. So here's our power cable. I'm sorry, not a power cable, the speaker cable. It's a 12 gauge. Nothing going on here. Absolutely nothing. Okay, and here's one of our power cables. Let me just put that down there. Okay, I'm standing on this. These are actually robust cables. All right, let's just add some more stuff here to the pile and hopefully get my point across. I haven't already. Okay, I'm, obviously I am standing on these cables. I feel fine doing this. I have never had a cable go bad by me, a band member, a staff member, facilities people, people running equipment over the cables. I've never once had a failure. Not once. Okay, uh, is this abuse of cables? I'm sure some people are looking at this going, what the heck is going on? During some events, we have bands that move their gear over our cables. And albeit there's not that many cables, uh, we do the, a very good job keeping a lot of the cables out of the way, speaker and XLR. But occasionally, we do have a run of cables that need to cross at some point on the stage. And many times, uh, especially when you're doing shows with different bands, when one band gets off the stage, they're going to be crossing the cables. But then when another band comes up on stage and you've got another piece of gear, let's say a Leslie, that they need to move around. And guess what? They are going to move it over the cables. So when we use the cables, we are actually using them. We almost, we don't expect things certainly to go wrong, but we know things do go wrong. And we know there's no intentional uh, abuse of a cable. All right. Let me ask you, is this use or abuse? Let me get one of my mic cables. And we're gonna put a couple of turns on it here. Yeah, maybe three, just to make sure. There we go. I'm gonna pull on thing real tight. Now what I'm gonna do here is, there's a stump I need to pull out of the ground. I'm gonna use this mic cable to do it here with uh, our three quarter ton cargo van. Okay, so is this uh, considered use? Or abuse. Now there may be a little bit more involved with that, just what you see here. Now, obviously, I'm not using the cable correctly, so am I abusing it? Not necessarily. There's a term between use and abuse, and that term is misuse. I am completely misusing how these cables are supposed to be used. These are not meant to pull anything, to hold any kind of weight. So 
I'm not using the cables correctly, so I'm misusing them. Now the result may be abuse, but am I actually abusing the cables by misusing them? Well, that's left open to interpretation. And obviously that was just for show. I would never treat my cables this way. But really, the thing you got to look for in the cables is not so much as, as the, the wiring part of it. This is actually very durable. Very durable. But the thing you got to look out for, if you're worried about the cables, is look out for the ends. These are the things that will, that will cause a big problem. Not the actual cable itself. It's the ends you got to look out for. Okay, now here in one of the shows that we did uh, some time ago, we're pulling out cables and we're moving these cables out of the case onto the stage. Now this is basically what I've been doing in here, just to show you how the cables can be dropped. But this is not abuse of the cables. Okay, and at this same event, here we are attaching monitor speakers and other XLR cables and I'm standing on a pile of cables. This is not hurting the cables. It may scuff them up a little bit, but the cables are not being damaged. Okay, so here I've got a speaker cable. It's a 12 gauge speaker cable. Now, is this abuse? See that right here? Okay, was that abuse? No, it was not. This is what I do when I go through and I strip the cables out to put new ends on them, new speak on ends. So no, of course this is not abuse. Now if I just did this during the show, cut it for no reason, that's not abuse, that's more like sabotage. Cabling itself is, is going to be fine. It really is. It's, it's more durable, I think, than what, what people think it is, uh, especially the um, 10 and 12 gauge uh, SOW cord used for power, as well as, I think that's a 12 gauge here, yeah, 12 gauge speaker cable. But really, if anything, you may want to watch the ends, especially those, but once again, uh, XLR cables really are a commodity. You should have a lot of XLR cables on hand, just in case, you never know. I'd say probably in the last 15 years of doing this, I've only had to replace maybe three or four cables. And I guarantee you, it was nothing within here than the cables, it was all something with the end. And that's usually because of the um, constant insertion and removal, insertion removal. It actually can cause problems within the pens themselves. This is where the failures are gonna occur. They will rarely occur in the actual uh, cable itself. So we probably have over 100 uh, XLR cables. Most of them are 30 feet in length. We have some that are 40 and 50 feet in length, and we actually have a few that are only 5 and 10 feet. But most all are in about the 30 foot, um, 30 foot lengths. Okay, cables are very important to the sound system, but there's something else that's probably in your arsenal of items that you have to do sound. And this item that you probably actually need to be more sensitive about than cables is this. The mic stand. Now these really aren't commodities, but it doesn't take much for a mic stand to get damaged. And a mic stand can also cause damage to other things. All it takes is some uh, band member, performer, or whatever. It can even be a stagehand. All they've got to do is knock one of these over. And if there's a mic at the end of it, that mic could get damaged. And when these things topple over, which it actually does happen often, if these things topple over, all it takes is a band member maybe to have backed into it, and they're not too sure of their footing, and then they end up stepping on it. Bending it, they can break parts of the stand. These stands, they do bend, and it doesn't take much for somebody to stand either on the boom arm, the, the stands, even the legs themselves to cause damage. 
And from events like that, I've probably lost maybe eight mic stands, probably in the last uh, 10 years. So during events, I am more focused on the safety of a mic stand and of the people, as well as the performers that are working around these. Said so these things can get damaged pretty easily. I don't focus too much on the cables. I know the cables are gonna be fine, but it's the mic stands that you really probably need to be watching and really be more sensi sensitive about. Well, I certainly hope that this um, sheds some light on how uh, you see stage left when we're using uh, cabling. Uh, we do respect the cabling because we know that without it, stuff's not going to work. But at the same time, we are using the cable and we are expecting the cable to be working for us. And the occasional, the occasional throwdowns, tosses, stuff like this, you know, that's just, it's just um, a cost of doing business. As always, thanks for watching.